Hello and welcome to chapter one, section four. Today we are talking about continuity and one-sided limits. So um, the word continuous is defined if uh, as if three rules are met. So the first rule is that f of c has to be defined. So whatever x value we're looking at um, to figure out if a function is continuous, um, that x value has to be defined, meaning there has to be a point there. The second rule is that the limit at that x value also has to exist. And then the third thing is that the limit number, whatever y value you get, and the point at which the y value exists at whatever x value also has to be equal to each other. And it's a lot easier to show this with pictures. So here, let me show you some counter examples. These are examples where um, these rules are not met. So looking at rule number one, if let's say we had a graph that looked like this, um, we'll pretend that this x value is c, whatever number that is, and there's a hole there. So if you remember from like previous um, things in math, when there's a hole, that means that uh, there was a spot where something canceled out if you had a rational uh, function. And so something canceled out, so you have a hole there. So there's not an actual point there. So at this, in this case right here, this graph where this hole is, that y value is undefined. So this is a counterexample to number one. So a function like this would be not continuous because there's a hole. For rule number two, we need a spot where wherever the x equals c is, um, that limit has to exist. So here's an example where at x equals c, the limit does not exist. So in this graph, we have the, um, at x equals c, the actual point exists. We have a point at x equals c, some y value for it exists, but the limit does not exist because when we go towards the two sides, uh, towards x equals c from the two sides, it approaches two different numbers. So remember that was one of the rules for when a limit does not exist. So in this case, it, this would also be not continuous, which also is pretty obvious, I feel like, because you have like a break in the graph. So how could that be continuous? All right, for this third example, for rule number three, this is also not continuous. So in this example, we have the limit at x equals c does exist because as you go towards the two sides of the graph going towards x equals c, we do approach the same number. However, and and f of c also exists because we actually have a point um, for the function uh, at x equals c, but those two y values at the point and at the limit, those are not the same values. So that's why this is also not continuous. Okay, so we have three examples here of discontinuities. So these are all examples where this is not continuous functions. So then we wanna talk about next the removable and non-removable discontinuities. So out of our three examples, we wanna see which of these can we make continuous because if we can change the function somehow to make it continuous, that would make our discontinuity removable because you can like remove the discontinuity from it and make it continuous. So in our first example right here, all we had wrong was just this hole. So if I could find a way to like plug up that hole, then I can make this function continuous because then I would actually have a point there and then there's no like anything to skip over. So if it was just a hole that was a problem, then this would be a removable discontinuity because I can just define um, I can just define a point to be at that spot um, by making this like a piecewise function and then that would plug up the hole. So for example, if I wrote out a piecewise function like this, if I just had, you know, this graph, we'll call, just call it f of x. Um, and so we have a whole, we'll pretend it's at x equals two. So because the function is defined everywhere else except two, we can just say, well, for whatever number this is, we can say, uh, let's pretend it's five. Then at x equals two, let's put a point at y equals five. That way we can plug up that hole and then we no longer have a hole there. That would make it continuous. Um, so that's something that we describe as a removable discontinuity. 
But then for graph number two, we've got this thing where even if I tried to plug up our um, this graph with a hole, this would still be discontinu uh, discontinuous because uh, we have this like gap right in between. So there's no way for us to like fix that gap. So this would be considered a non-removable discontinuity. And then this third graph that we have is similar to the first graph. So because we have that hole, we can plug it in with some other point and then that would make it continuous. Okay, so for an example, um, if we were asked to discuss the continuity of the function, some function, so in this case, let's use f of x equals 2x plus 1 divided by x plus 1. So this is a rational function. So keeping in mind what rational functions look like, there's got to be asymptotes in there. Because if we look at the denominator, we know x can't equal negative 1, because if you plugged in x equals negative 1, you would end up dividing by zero, that's not allowed. So we know there's vertical asymptote there. There's also a horizontal asymptote in this graph because uh, if you look at the degree on top and the degree on the bottom, they are the same. And that's when you're supposed to divide by the leading coefficients to see what the horizontal asymptote is going to be. So really quick, here's what the graph looks like. We've got a vertical asymptote at x equals negative one, so I've drawn that here. And then the horizontal asymptote should be what y equals two, because if you divided the first terms of two x over x, you would get two. Um, so we got y equals two as the horizontal asymptote here. And this is what the graph generally looks like, just a really quick sketch. So as you can see, um, we definitely, if we are looking for continuity um, to say if this graph is continuous or not, um, we've got a vertical asymptote that kind of separates our two parts of the graph. So um, when it says to discuss the continuity of the function, we want to ask these three questions. Is the function continuous? Yes or no? Where is it not? So if it's not continuous, where does that occur? What x value does that occur at? And then lastly, is it removable? So those are the three things you want to mention when it says discuss the continuity. So for this function, even if I just follow the graph with my finger, I would have to lift it up at some point so it is not continuous. I'm gonna say no for that. Where is it not? So because of that horizontal or sorry, vertical asymptote at x equals negative one, that's where it's not continuous because that's worth breaking up my graphs. Um, is it removable? So can I just plug in a point and just kind of fix this discontinuity? This is a no because I've got a graph that's going upwards and then like starts from the bottom and goes to the right. So there's no way I can just like pick a spot for a point to be to like kind of fix that discontinuity. So this is not a removable discontinuity. So when I discuss the continuity of this function, I would say that it's continuous everywhere except x equals negative one and it's non-removable. So let's do another example. This time we've got f of x equals x squared plus five x plus six all divided by x plus three. So we wanna figure out, is the function continuous? Where is it not? Is it removable again? So first, um, is it continuous? Well, I have a rational function here. So I already know if x equals negative three, then I would end up with some, zero on the denominator, which is not good. So I already know that at x equals negative three, I'm gonna have something where it's not continuous, but let's figure out if that something is actually a hole or an asymptote um, so that we can say whether it's removable or not. So if I were to simplify this uh, function, if I factored out the top, I can factor it into x plus two, x plus three, or times x plus three. And then this gives me the opportunity to cancel out with the x plus three that's on the bottom. And if you remember, whenever you cancel something out like that, that's when it becomes a hole. So our final graph, or our final function, ends up being just x plus two, which if you graph it out, it becomes a line. Um, but when x equals three, we know, or x equals negative three, we know that we can't actually plug this in uh, because of that x plus three that was originally on the bottom. So there's going to be a hole at x equals negative three because it got canceled out. So it's not an asymptote, it's just a hole. Which means, is the function continuous? Uh, it's continuous everywhere except x equals negative 3. 
So that answers both the first and the second questions. And then is it removable? Yes, because it's a hole. And holes are removable because technically we could just plug in a point right at x equals negative 3. Um, and specifically, we can actually figure out it's at negative 3. And then when you plug in negative 3 into the simplified version of our function, which is x plus 2, you end up with a y value of negative 1. So if we defined a point at negative 3 comma negative 1, then we would have a continuous function. The next example I want to do is a piecewise function. So if we look here, we have the function f of x equals, and then I've got whenever x is less than 1, it's going to be the function 3x minus 5. If x is greater than or equal to 1, then it's going to be the function negative 2x squared. So this is kind of weird because now I have to figure out, like, between these two functions, what's the graph going to look like? Is it continuous? So first, I'm going to sketch this out because I don't actually know, like, what this is going to look like. So if we can kind of see it, that'll give us a visual and we can see, like, is it supposed to be continuous? Are there gaps in it? Let's look. All right, so I've got my axis set up. So I'm going to start with a 3x minus 5. 3x minus 5, I know, is just going to be an equation of a line, so because I'm x plus b form. So I'm going to graph out the y-intercept, which is negative 5, 5. And then a slope of 3 means I'm rising 3, going over by 1, rise 3, go over by 1, down 3, over by 1. Okay, so there's my line. Um, except we only want this for x is less than 1. So x is... 1, x equals 1 right here, so really I don't want a point there, so I'm going to just draw a circle. And then I'm really only graphing everything to the left of that, because that's where x is less than 1. Okay, then my other graph is negative 2x squared. So thinking about x squared graphs, that's going to be a parabola. It's going to face down because it's got a negative in front of the x squared term. Um, I'll graph this one in blue just so we can see the difference. Um, let's just plug in points because, you know, whatever. So at x equals 0, y equals 0. At x equals 1, y equals negative 2. At x equals 2, y equals negative 8. So way down here, and then if x equals negative 1, it'd be over here. Okay, so I see the parabola already. Something like this. Ooh, okay, except we only want x values that are greater than or equal to 1. So really, I don't want any of this stuff on this side. Don't want that. Don't want that, because that's where um, x is not less that's where x is less than one and we only wanted x is greater than or equal to one so okay there's my graph so if that's my graph we want to figure out if this is continuous so x is greater than or equal to one means i do have a point at x equals one and i know the line on the left so the 3x minus 5 line the one that's in red is going to be continuous because it's going to continue on forever and ever going downwards. Same thing with my parabola, so the blue graph on the right. That's going to keep going down forever and ever. And I don't actually have any holes in the middle because wherever negative 2x squared was at the point x equals 1, um, that actually took over the spot where I originally drew that open circle. So that circle got filled in. So this is actually going to be continuous everywhere. So we don't have any discontinuity, so we don't have to say whether it's removable or not, because we don't have any. Continuous everywhere. Fantastic. We can also show this using the definition of continuity, because really the point that's in question is when x equals 1. So if we were looked at the three rules of, of continuity, um, the first rule was that uh, for this function at 1, that has to exist. So at f or at x equals 1, um, the y value is negative 2 because we could plug in 1 into the second equation of our piecewise function because that's where x equals 1 would exist. 
Um, it wouldn't be in the first one because that's it doesn't include x equals 1. And then our second rule was that the limit as x approaches 1 of f of x has to exist. So if you look at our graph, when we look from the two sides going towards x equals 1, it does exist. It goes towards a common point. It goes towards negative 2. And our third rule was that these two numbers have to equal each other. So f of 1 is equal to the limit as x approaches 1 of f of x, and that's true as well. So that's why it was continuous. Okay, so the next thing I want to talk about is called one-sided limits. So one-sided limits is basically still limits, but we're only looking at one side of it. So if you think back to when we looked at limits before, like using a graph, we would take our fingers, follow the graph until it got to whatever point, and then we would look at the two sides and hope they would be the same number. So here, one-sided limits means we're only looking from either the right or the left side. So if you see a little like plus sign next to your number, like kind of look where an exponent would be, um, that means approach x equals c from the right side. So think like positive on the right. And then if you see a little minus sign there where the exponent would be, then that means approach x equals c from the left side. So whatever number c is, you're going to just use your left hand. Or if it's got the plus sign, you're just going to use your right hand to see where it approaches. All right, so here's an example. So let's say I'm trying to find the limit as x approaches 0 plus. So that means we're looking from the right side of the function square root of x plus 5. So I've crafted it out here for you just so we have a little visual to look at. Um, so we're basically going towards x equals 0 on the right side. So if my graph is going to be this like half parabola thing because it's a square root function, um, we know that square root functions, we can't have any negative numbers under the square root. So that's why we don't have anything on the left side of the graph over here. So if we take our finger and follow my graph from the right side going towards x equals 0, at x equals 0, the y value is 5. So the limit from the right side would be 5. For my next example, I want to do a piecewise function again. So this time I've got the two functions, negative 2x plus 3 and x squared, but um, where they kind of like separate is at x equals 1. So negative 2x plus 3 when x is only less than 1, and x squared when x is greater than or equal to 1. And so finding my left and right side limits. So for part A, I'm going to find the limit as x approaches 1 from the left side. So from the left side means I'm using numbers that are smaller than 1, because, you know, to the left of 1 is um, numbers that are smaller. So that means I'd be looking at the first function here, the negative 2x plus 3. So if I'm approaching 1, using the function negative 2x plus 3, think about that as a graph, like that's a line right there, it's going like this way. So approaching positive 1, I would get to, you know, whatever y value. And to figure that out, I can just plug in x equals 1 into negative 2x plus 3, because plugging in would work in this case. So when I do that, I end up with negative 2 times 1 plus 3 gives me 1. So approaching from the left side, I would use the negative 2x plus 3 function, because that's everything on the left, plug it in to get my limit. On the right side, that means x has to be greater than 1, because if I'm approaching the graph from the right, that those are all numbers that are bigger than 1, so it's going to be the x squared function that I'd plug into. And so 1 squared equals 1. Okay, so those are my two limits. What's nice about this is if I figure out that these two limits are both equal to the same number, this also means that the limit exists and it's continuous. Because if you think about it, if you're going from both the left and the right going towards x equals 1, if you're approaching the same number, that was the definition of a limit right there. Um, that if they were the same number, you would have a limit that existed. So if the right limit equals the same number as the left limit, then the limit exists and the limit is equal to whatever those two numbers were. Also, if we know that these two numbers are the same, then we also know this is continuous. At x equals 1. So that's kind of nice too. So many things to look at here. All right, that's it for this section. Thanks for watching. Bye.